Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Baxter with Accent Software. Uh, we've been walking through the manufacturing process within the Dynamics NAV client. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the series so far. Uh, today is going to be another extension to the manufacturing series. And this one will be all wrapped around scheduling and how to schedule within your plant, your shop, uh, even your people and machines. Today that's what we're going to be looking into. It's a really broad topic. I'm going to try to stay fairly high level. There is a lot of detail to it. There's a lot with capacity and looking at how it's affected and how new orders come into play and, and can we deliver on that, what's late, what's in process, that sort of thing. So there's a lot to cover. I'm going to dive into it pretty quick. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along. If not, always rewatch our videos. Uh, we hope you enjoy that and the ability to see this information. We do appreciate anyone that likes our videos, subscribes to our channel. We do try to put out relevant information probably on about a weekly basis. So keep looking for new videos on the Microsoft Dynamics NAV client for both manufacturing, job costing, uh, as well as information on just the base product itself. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to jump into a released production order uh, and I have a subassembly make to stock item and I have typical routing and bomb with it. So this one's going to go through four different workstations. You can see that one of the steps is finished, the other's in progress, and the others are planned. So let's take a look at what that looks like for the scheduling view. So I'm going to expand out my scheduling. And I can see on the Gantt chart that there is a little construction bar. Hopefully you can see that. I can make it a little bit bigger for you. The, the little construction bar means it's in process as well as this icon here means it started sometime in the past. And then I can see the next operations are coming up. It's going to go from Linda's station over to a painting robot and then to a packing table. And then the sticker length, I call this a sticker, but there's a thatched out part which is the setup and then the runtime. I am showing my non-working period, so if I hide those you can see a more real-time view of, of the actual time. So that is working time that this different operations are going to go through. So that is the, the single hand view of this production order. So from the production order itself, I have the ability to see the schedule and how that production order uh, is scheduled and slated to run through that. But I want to take a, a bigger view of it. So I have uh, in this database about 10 released production orders and several firm planned production orders. I want to take a, a global view of the shop and say, show me everything. So I can either do that within NAV, like you saw from the production order, or I can also publish it out to a, a browser. In this case, I'm using Google Chrome, but you can use Internet Explorer, Firefox, whatever the different browsers you like to use. And so we're viewing live NAV data visually represented as a schedule. So each of the stickers in the different colors represent some piece of data that is in my Dynamics NAV client. This program is being auto refreshed with this data every three seconds. So as a new production order gets taken into a place, as time gets posted or production gets posted, this schedule will be updated as fast as every three seconds. So uh, as real time as you can get, I don't have to click refresh or anything like that. It just it's doing it for me. But let's talk about what we're seeing here. So these are different operations on different production orders all within my system, all with different routing, setup times, run times, wait times, move times, all of those different factors along with the machines and their capacities. So each operation has to be slated on a specific machine center within a work center or a, just a work center if it's a sub-assembly or, or sorry, a subcontracted service that someone's doing for you. And so we have these slated. Now I have control over this. I have the ability to adjust this by coming up to my action, saying move, grabbing a operation and moving it out in the future and letting it resort with that new piece of information. You'll notice 3050 to 3050 down here. So because I grabbed this assembly step and moved it out, it's now moved out my packing step as well. But it's left me with some capacity, some free capacity on this packing station. Now I could always try to make these manual adjustments and move things around and try to adjust my schedule, but I like the ability to just say, well let's go ahead and, and run the schedule optimization. Optimization is a big word um, because 
you get control of that. So uh, it's not just a out of the box algorithm, which uh, it comes with one, which is very, very good and an industry standard, but you get control of it. So if you have certain priorities that take effect, if you have set up time that you want to minimize, you can control that and make that a higher priority for the schedule. It may make different production orders run late if you're just trying to minimize your setup time, but maybe that's okay if you're all doing make to stock environment and you're all concerned about cost. So you get control of that. Don't think the optimization is fixed. You can play with that, adjust to see what your needs fit. We'll make our recommendations on what works best but it's it's up to you to make that final decision I've optimized it obviously I've cleared up some capacity you will notice that there's capacity here so there is time for Linda on the second and fifth day or sorry on the fourth and fifth day of the month where there's capacity and then this operations out here so the question becomes why isn't this filling in the capacity well, because of predecessors. So uh, the way the system works is uh, if I come in and I'm going to select uh, this 3050, just happens to be the one I was talking about earlier, it is waiting on this welding step to finish before it can start. So it, it is not allowing this to move into the past because it can't really start until this step is completed. Now that's all based on your routing and what you have set up in play. This particular production order, I've gone ahead and focused on it, is going to start on the packing table. It's going to move over to do some machining. We'll see if there's something else below it. Yeah, so we have a machine operator that's going to help set up that machine. Then the machine's going to run. And then it's going to move to a welder. Now this welding looks like it could have started here, but it needs a specific station for that welding to take place. So until the welding station frees up, we can't schedule the welder to do that work. So those two have to run in parallel for both setup and runtime. And then once they're complete, then the Linda can start doing her work and then it goes back to painting and then packed up and shipped out the door. So you have control over what the schedule looks like. It doesn't have to be straight line, but it, it is industry specific. So if you're in a, let's say, liquid environment where you're mixing up a bunch of crude oil or something like that, generally that's in a really, really large tank. You're boiling it, uh, you're adding additives and that sort of thing. Those all have to happen on the same machine. You can control that. So you can make it so that each operation happens right after each other in a line on the same machine. In this environment, I have the ability to move the product around to my different machines in my shop to make the most efficient schedule possible because it doesn't have to stay in one large tank. So it just depends on the, the product you make and your shop environment and what it would look like on your schedule. The system's very flexible. It'll handle uh, just about every environment I've ever seen and, and with some very complex requirements. So hopefully we'll, we'll have further conversations with you directly on how to apply this software to your business. Today, High level, we'll just walk you through it and let you see some of the, the nice features to it and see if they apply. Okay, so the next thing I want to cover is kind of the, the color coding of this. Okay, so I'm looking at the schedule. I see a bunch of stickers representing different operations and different production orders. What, what do those mean to me? Well, that color is something you control. So you can make that color very meaningful to you. Now a color that I think everyone is used to is an advanced delay color scheme. So if it's green, it's good. If it's yellow, orange, or red, it's bad. So in this case, we have a fairly good schedule. I do see I have some late operations trying to get done right there at the beginning. But after that, for the most part, we're in the green. We do see some yellow. And I do track these indicators so I can come up to my uh, planning indicators and say my service ratio is 77%. So I've, I'm currently at a 77% on-time delivery of my production orders. And I can see that that's an increase from my published plan, which is at 69%. So this is a better working plan that I've come up with since I've optimized it and I would want to publish this information because this is a better plan as long as I'm agreeing with the software numbers wise is a better plan so I would want to publish this uh, and make my staff and my shop aware of these new uh, scheduling changes so let's talk about that let's let's say that this is great and I publish this information to them. How does the shop digest the information? One, you've solved the production orders in the system. 
they're going to be uh, available so they're going to have that new data published to them they're going to see that but I'm out in the shop I don't have access to NAV on a workstation something like that maybe I have a very simple terminal where it's a Chrome box or something like that it just has a browser well that's okay obviously we're in a browser so I'm going to go to the resource sequence now the resource sequence is a machine by machine or person by person depending on how you set it up view of the schedule so I can see and I've got it color coded here late on time that sort of thing but I can color code it however I want maybe my customers have a different scheme so I can see what my colors are the items can have different colors associated with them I can set those those colors up however I want but this is essentially my view of what I need to do delay is not going to be all that important so we're going to say well maybe quantity is more important we'll bring that over the remaining quantity is important take delay out so now I can see okay this is what I'm supposed to start I'm supposed to produce X amount I can go ahead and add to that the setup time uh, so we'll go ahead and add that we'll add the time load as well drag those up so now I'm going to see uh, when I'm supposed to start we'll make sure we get these columns in order how long it's supposed to take and how many I'm supposed to make. So I had OK. So now I see for this operation, this is a production order operation 10 assembly. I'm supposed to start at 8 a.m. on the 28th, one hour setup and six hours run time to make all 24 of those. And I have 24 of 24 remaining. So that tells me that's the traveler I need to grab. I need to go scan in my time. Now obviously I'm not covering the time portion of this or the material procurement or any of that. Uh, this is just what has been published to me. So somebody else is handling that the material will be there for me. That is taken into account for scheduling as well. So we, we track those dates. When it's scheduled for me, everything, as long as everyone else is doing their job, should be there for me. So I can grab my traveler, go clock in, and start doing my work. So that's the idea here. This is exactly what's been scheduled for me and my queue of work on what I'm supposed to do. So after my work here, I'm going to go the next to uh, a different operation on a different production order, 30 minute setup time, 33 minute run time, and I should produce 33 out of that. And I can see what those are by having the items there if I want to do that as well. So that's a view for the individual person. So as they log in, uh, it's going to remember who they last logged in. So think of this as a tablet device. So if I have an iPad or a Surface out in the shop, how I log into that Surface or how I log into that iPad is going to display a specific resource sequence for me and that's going to tell me my queue of work. So I'm empowering my shop by giving it devices that will allow it to connect to the data, read it in real time. So again, a three minute refresh, it's reading that data and it's updating what my schedule is. So think about how dynamic your shop can be when you have a new rush order that pops up and you can get it pushed out to your shop in real time. It could be a, a big saver for your company. So that's a quick look at the resource sequence. We're gonna jump over to the load chart. So now we're petting on kind of the uh, shop foreman's hat, the, the operations manager. We're gonna be looking at our shop, how are we doing? If we're looking at the numbers by week, these are the days of the week, the 27, 28, 29. This is the capacity that we have available. 27 is in the past, that's why it's at zero, that you can't work in the past. We have loaded, time load, 6.93. Our capacity is seven hours, uh, so we're at 91%. On the 29th, 7.6 uh, of 7.6, we're at 100%. Now I can tell typical workday is eight hours. This is at 7.6, so Brian's not as efficient as Linda or Mike is. So if I go ahead and pull down efficiency, I can add that measure and we'll add that to the end. So I can see he's 95% efficient, which is why his capacity has been reduced. He can't produce as much in the same amount of time. That's where that gets taken into account. You can add a whole bunch of different measures, change your time scales, adjust the information displayed over here. So this makes more sense to you based on what measures you like to view. So again, we're looking at it as a capacity. Uh, so I can see 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. We're looking good for the next week uh, and most of today. Same for the, the others. And this is a finite capacity tool. So it's not going to allow me to schedule over 100%. It will push that work off to the next time period. So you'll always see it cap at 100%. 
Uh, you could view it as a infinite plan. The only issue with that is that when you do so, it's going to uh, look like it's bottlenecked. You'll see 240%, okay? So that's a bottleneck. But because that's pushed over time, our schedule looked okay, we don't need to add additional people there yet but something to monitor for sure if that gets up to a thousand percent then we've really got some issues but because we're fairly well on time we don't need to add additional people at this time but again you can make those decisions this is one where it's expanded this is a work center with the machines and the people inside uh, minimized so now I'm looking at the efficiency or the capacity load across that entire work center so it's at hundred percent I can shrink down this one and we're going to be very close to hundred percent so ninety seven percent because uh, one of our people was just slightly underutilized on that day uh, so a different way of, of expanding the information and seeing how you want to see your load but a kind of a global statistical view of, of the load and how it's going to look over the next week, two weeks, uh, whatever load you've got built into your schedule so far. And then lastly, the, the work order Gantt chart. This would be the production orders that I have in my system, uh, where they are going to fall date-wise. Um, and then I can always expand it out to see if there were any kind of duplicates or anything where I have multiple operations happening at the same time. I would be able to see that here as well. Lots of different views, lots of different information and input that you can add to the system to control the schedule. And then obviously you make the movements, you adjust it as the scheduler. You know better than I do, obviously. But I'm going to help give you the tool and help guide you through utilizing the tool to best make you efficient within what you are doing and then once you've got it you're running with it you've improved your schedule so we saw in the indicators and details our schedule actually improved up to 77 percent efficient so what we're going to do is we're going to publish that information and so i'm going to hit ok it's going to take everything that i've now scheduled utilizing that optimization maybe some movements and then it's going to publish it it's going to make it available to everybody else it's going to update my production orders with the new dates it's going to tell my shop resource sequence people uh, exactly what's going to be next in their queue so that they continue to work and ho hopefully uh, when you're doing your optimizations you're scheduling from using a frozen period to kind of lock off two or three days so that their schedule isn't up impacted right away but you uh, obviously your business, your workflow will determine that on how quickly you impact those people. So that's a look at the, the scheduling side of it. Again, back in NAV, we're tracking all of that information. So if I come here within the routing, we have the, the scheduled start and finish dates and when it's going to finish, all of that kind of information. If there's an earliest start date, that's kind of an advanced topic, so we can talk about that. But everything related to this is built out. So all of the links between the different operations gets built into play and, and you can track everything throughout the system on the production orders inside the database. So again, I showed everything from a browser. Let me just go ahead and show it from within the Dynamics NAV client as well. So without leaving NAV, again, ERP, you're trying to bring everything into one environment. That's exactly what we're doing here. Although I can view this same functionality in a browser, I don't have to. I could do it from within NAV itself, but the, the browser allows me to just take it to more devices. I can take it uh, remote and put it on a tablet and, and move it around with me. So a lot of great functionality here, a lot of great tools to help you make your scheduling an easier task. It's never easy to schedule a shop and, and try to hit all those deadlines this tool is designed to make that more efficient for you. I'd love to say it makes it easy for you, but I've, I've never seen scheduling be easy. It does make it more efficient and a great tool for you, so I hope you're able to utilize it. Again, there's a lot more content that I didn't even, I mean, we're at the tip of the iceberg on this, so reach out to us. Try to pepper us with your questions on how it would apply to your business, and we'll respond to you. We'll set up follow-up meetings and, and show you it in a lot more detail so that you can really understand how this could be a great tool for you and your business. So I hope you've liked our content today. Hopefully it was uh, meaningful and gave you some insight into what capabilities are out there. We'd love to follow up with you and hear from you. Uh, feel free to like this video if you like the content, subscribe to our channel, and please pass it along to your colleagues and business partners uh, so that other people can see this great content. Really appreciate it. Have a great day.